To discuss more on Budget 2019, the opposition to it and the allocations we've invited to our studios as promised, uh, Parliamentarian UPFA, Kanchana Vijay Sekara. Good evening and a warm welcome to First at Nine. Good evening. Welcome Thank back, in me. fact. Um, I think, um, Kanchana, now uh, this government's budget has been welcomed by certain quarters, while the opposition too um, has certain views on this. Finance Minister Mangala Samarawira continues to say that this is not an election budget, although we are expecting um, elections around the corner at the end of the year and um, going forward. What is your view in this regard? Because the opposition today in Parliament, we saw the opposition counter um, these uh, comments and also the government has shown that they have been able to um, tap into all sectors of uh, the country's required um, you know, areas through this budget, which means they've actually been able to win the hearts of many. Um, I think any government that brings in a budget tries to bring in an attractive budget to the people. So this budget is no difference. And we have seen in the 2018 budget as well, uh, there were attractive proposals. But if you look at the progress that was done in the last year, the same uh, finance minister made the proposals uh, for, for the economic development of this country and so many other infrastructure development proposals. But if you look at all the indicators, economic indicators, and uh, also different rankings the country has gained, uh, we have what we have seen is from 2017 uh, we have actually gone back but if and if you compare it to 2014 all the indicators uh, especially the economic growth we have decreased from from about 7.4 percent to about 3.2 percent and 3.2 percent is the lowest in Southeast Asia and as well as most Asian countries have gone over four percent and, and also, uh, if you look at all these credit rated agencies, uh, Fitch Ratings, Moody's, Standard and Poor's, all these agencies have downgraded Sri Lanka. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but these downgrades came during the October uh, period. This is following the, uh, uh, the uh, political crisis. But, but if, yeah, it came through the political crisis during that period, but credit ratings are not down uh, in a certain one week or two week period. It's done taking into account how the country has performed, how the economy has performed over a year's time. So the credit ratings were anyway due even regardless of the constitution uh, crisis or the government changes, whatever thing. Uh, the, c the credit rating agencies were to downgrade Sri Lanka in any any manner. But what the uh, United uh, National Front government, what they continue to say, uh, even if you just uh, had a look uh, about that previous uh, UNF press briefing, what they continue to say is this is because of the borrowings of the previous regime, mm -hmm. the nine years uh, of borrowings, and this is exactly why we had to pay all this debt, and uh, that's why we are in, in, in this state. No, what that, do you no, have to say no, that? Is, that? that is the campaign slogan that they used in 2015 for the January elections. But if you really look at the debt situation in this country. Uh, when President Rajapaksa took over as president in 2005, the, the entire debt borrowings the country had was at 2 trillion. Uh, from 2 trillion to 7.3 uh, trillion was the amount that was borrowed by President Rajapaksa in a nine year period. So he borrowed uh, about 5.1 uh, 5 trillion during the nine years that he was in power. But the debt situation right now we have gone from 7 trillion to 12 trillion and we are almost at uh, twice the amount that we had in 2015, January. So if you look at the situation, uh, nine years, uh, the nine year period that President Rajapaksa governed, uh, the entire borrowings that were done was 5 trillion, but this government has borrowed 5 S trillion in four year period, as well as increasing the tax, uh, tax revenue as well. So, Kanchana, if, if we talk about, if you all are saying that this is not the way to govern the country and if this is not the economic uh, uh, policy that the government should implement, what is exactly the alternative? What is your solution? No, we are this? not saying that the country should not borrow, but you have to show something for what you have borrowed. So, this government doesn't have anything to show for what they have borrowed. The President Rajapaksa's government had things to show. We had a port that was built in Hambantura. We had an airport that was built in Mattala. There was highways that was developed to the south and to the airport as well. 
And there were all these infrastructure development that was taking uh, place, the Port City Development Project, uh, the Nono Chole uh, Electrical Plant. All these things took place in that $5 trillion that was borrowed by the Rajapaksa government. But this government, with the borrowing that they have done in the $5 trillion, uh, there's nothing to show for. And they have but already sold out most of the development work that has been taking place in the nine year period. Coming back again to that same question, what even in uh, Parliament today, what uh, the leader of the House, uh, Lakshman Kiriyal, has said was that these all, uh, all these projects that you guys have done in the past is the reason that the country is right now in this uh, dire economic situation because none of them are generating the uh, funds that are expected, uh, the Hamad report, uh, the Mathal International Airport. So what exactly is... is and I think to add to that, uh, there's also comments from the government that during the October to December, the, the, the political situation in that, uh, in that period has actually burdened the country and uh, put the country into a further mess financially. Now, uh, now, this 51-day period that mm -hmm. President Rajapaksa became Prime Minister is what they are using to cover up the entire four and a half year mess that they have put the country through. So uh, you can't compare 51 days. Uh, I think you have to go and compare 2014, where we were 2014, and where we are right now, uh, rather than uh, comparing what happened in the 51 days. Mm -hmm. And also about the projects that uh, Honorable Lakshman Kiriel criticized about. Now, uh, what they said was to pay off the loans in the Hambantu report that they had to go into agreement with the Chinese government. So the debt is, uh, is being paid, paid in full by the Chinese government or the Chinese company that had uh, taken over the Hambantu report. So if that is the case, then our borrowings or our debt situation should be less. But what we see right now is an increase in the debt situation. And the highways. Uh, the highways have generated more money than expected. And that has, I think, been one of the, the biggest projects that, was, that has benefited this government in the last three, four years. And, mm -hmm. and also the Norocholi plan, which was criticized heavily by the, uh, by the government back then in the opposition. Mm -hmm. uh, if not for the Norocholi plan, uh, I think uh, our uh, diesel bills would have increased much more for generation of power. And we wouldn't have been able to generate all this power. And also, I would like to point out that uh, some of the major proposals that were presented in this budget, it looks attractive. Uh, that's why I say it, it is a uh, budget that is focused on going for elections because they say that it's covered all the sectors. But, but just to add to that also, I think uh, we, we are talking about tax revenue here, but um, the government also says that this uh, high uh, expenditure, the capital expenditure that we're looking at in the rest of 2018 will not be financed through borrowings, which means there is also an effort to uh, not push the country into a further debt trap. What are your thoughts? No, that's because they have increased the, the tax revenue from 1 trillion to 2 trillion from 2014 to 2019. So it is an increase of 100%. So they put the burden on the people. So, uh, and with that tax revenue, and also they have proposed actually to borrow 2 billion, to uh, 2 trillion uh, in this year as well in the parliament. Uh, that was a proposal for. So they can't say that they're not going to borrow any money. Right. So, and, and also uh, the proposals that were read out in Parliament day before yesterday. Mm -hmm. Most of those proposals were there in the same uh, budget debates, budget proposals in 2016, 17, 18 as well. So right. uh, even the more attractive ones are actually catered towards the youth. So mm -hmm. we can see that uh, they're actually going in for an election next year. So this could well be the last budget proposal mm -hmm. that this government is bringing in. So you're uh, hopeful that there will be an election? No, there'll be definitely election coming up. So mm -hmm. there'll be a presidential election by the end of the year. And there will be a pro parliamentary elections uh, uh, by April of next right. year. So that's what they're gearing up for. Right. And, and, and also one more yes. thing, uh, the if you look at all these uh, indicators, even the stock market. Now the stock market at 2014 mm -hmm. was at, uh, the return on investment was at 25%. Now the return on investment is at negative 5%. So who would come to invest in a country which gives a negative investment on return? So those are the right. indicators that we had to go by. So I think Anshina will talk more on that at Hyde Park. But on first at nine, this is all the time we have. We have um, we have most stories. Yeah.